Good day everybody, um, this is Ziyang He and Amani Bagula and today we're going to be talking about interpreting a cervical spine x-ray. So we first and foremost want to establish why it's so important to be able to interpret a cervical spine x-ray. So cervical spine injuries, although they are quite uncommon, they cause severe morbidity and mortality. It is therefore the onus of the healthcare practitioner to equip themselves with the skills necessary to best aid the patient. So interpreting cervical spine x-rays can be quite daunting in medical school. We therefore decided to make the systematic approach to interpretation in order to facilitate learning. Individuals who receive um, C-spine x-rays are either our trauma or non-trauma patients. Um, our trauma patients are typically our high-energy trauma patients and our low-energy trauma patients with specific indications as above. Looking at the x-ray details, we look at the patient's name, date of birth and folder number, the date and time of the radiograph taken. There are four standard views, the lateral and the anterior posterior, and the odontoid and oblique. Our swimmer's view is our additional view and it's typically done um, to see, um, to visualize C7 and T1 junction better or if we do not get an adequate um, lateral C-spine. We use the ABCDE's approach in order to systematically review our C-spine X-ray A. Am I adequately um, seeing all the relevant structures? Another A is alignment or all the lines which should be uninterrupted, uninterrupted within our C-spine X-ray. B, bodies, we're looking for any deformity in the vertebral bodies. Um, C, we're looking at cortical outlines, we're looking for any fractures within our cortical outline. Um, D, disc spacing, we're looking for any irregularities of the disc spacing, uh, indicating herniation. And finally, E, we're looking for edges and soft tissues, we're looking for our surrounding um, um, fractures as well as soft tissue injuries. So our A stands for adequacy and alignment. So adequacy dictates that we need to see from the base of the skull all the way um, to the top of T1. And we can see this here, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7, and then the top of T1 over here. Alignment dictates that we have three uninterrupted lines, namely our anterior vertebral line, which lies on the anterior aspect of our vertebra, our posterior vertebral line, which lies on the posterior aspect of our vertebra, and our spinal laminar line, which lies on the um anterior aspect of our spinous processes. So in B, which is our bodies, we're just looking for any deformities of the body and ensuring that each body is relatively um, the same height. Then um, C, which is our cortical outline. So we're going to look at the outline of each of our um, vertebrae in order to determine if there's any fractures. And then importantly, we're also going to look at our C2 bone ring, which is made out of the lateral masses, which are viewed from the side, which form a corticoid ring of bone. So um, as seen over here, so any step in this um, ring may indicate a fracture. So D, which is our disc space. So our intervertebral discs are typically difficult to see on x-ray, but we look in between each vertebra and see if they're relatively um, even. E, which is our edges and soft tissues. Um, so edges, we're going to look for fractures of our surrounding bone, like our cranium and our mandible. And then our soft tissues. Um, so we're looking for um, normal prevertebral soft tissues. So our normal prevertebral soft tissue um, above C4, so C1, C2, C3, C4. Um, above C4, they are less than a third of the width of the vertebral body. Below C4, they are less than 100% of the width of the vertebral body. So any enlargement may indicate a prevertebral hematoma. Um, starting at A again, um, so on AP view, adequacy dictates that all um, um, cervical vertebrae must be seen as well as the upper thoracic vertebrae. And alignment dictates that the... Um, lateral um, edges of the cervical spine are in line as seen here. E for bodies, we're looking for any deformities of our vertebral bodies. C, we're looking at the cortical outline for any fractures, but this is typically difficult to see on AP um, view. So D for disc spacing, we're looking at the space in between each vertebra. E is our edges and our soft tissue. So E, we're going to look for any fractures of the ribs, um, as well as any pneumothorax in the um, apicleme. And in soft tissue, we're going to look for um, any surgical emphysema, but this is difficult to see in this x-ray. Adequacy and alignment and our cortical outline view are the most important aspects of our dantoid view x-ray. So adequacy, adequacy dictates that both C1 and C2 lateral masses are present. So this is our C1 and this is our C2 lateral present, um, masses which are present. Alignment dictates that the lateral processes of um, both C1 and um, C2 are aligned. So that's our lateral process of C1 and C2 on the one side, on the other side. And we can see here that they are perfectly aligned. 
So see, we're looking at our cortical outline and we're just going to determine um, if we see any fractures and this is not the case over here. And those are the most important aspects of our odontoid view. Let's put this into practice and look at some pathology. Okay, so let's look at some examples now. This is a lateral C-spine x-ray of a patient who experienced some trauma. Um, you can see here that there are no patient details and no indication of time or date. Um, so we can move on to looking at adequacy. You can see that this uh, x-ray is adequate. We could see um, all the vertebrae. There's C1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then, um, 7, and then the top of T1 here. It's adequate. Then looking at alignment, we look at our different lines. Here's the anterior line going down here. Um, we have the posterior line. And lastly, the spinal lamina line. You can see that here in the region of C6 is some malalignment. Next, we're going to look at the bodies, the vertebral bodies, and specifically, we're looking at height and shape and if there's any collapses. So all of the vertebral bodies look about the same height and um, there is no obvious uh, deformities in shape and none of the vertebrae seem collapsed. Okay, so next we're going to look at the cortical outlines and on this image we can see that um, the cortical outlines on this x-ray aren't very clear and don't accurately show the body's actual outline and especially the side on the facets. However, we could see that most of the facets seem to be more or less um, parallel at the level of C5 and C6, uh, the inferior articular facet and the superior articular facet of the one under it seems to be at a different angle. Now onto disc spacings. We could see that uh, most of these discs are um, around roughly the same size. However, we do see that the disc space here between C5 and 6 is a bit smaller compared to the other ones and then in this region uh, between C6 and C7 it is slightly larger. Next we move on to edges so you can see on top here that um, the skull there doesn't seem to be any abnormalities even down below even though we can't see everything very clearly there doesn't seem to be any abnormalities. Next we're looking at um, the soft tissue can draw the soft tissue line in here and we can see that um, above C4 so here's one two three four that's C4 above C4 soft tissue is less than one third the width of the vertebral body below it's less than a hundred percent and we can see that um, even at the bottom around here it seems to be less than uh, the width of a vertebra so in conclusion, what do we see on this x-ray? Well, we see a unilateral perch facet subluxation at the level of C5 and 6. You can see that this uh, facet is perched on top of the one below it. And any more movement um, anteriorly of C5 would uh, cause it to dislocate completely. So what are the take-home messages? Well, always remember that uh, C-spine fractures are very dangerous and a clear C-spine x-ray does not rule out any pathology. Use your history and examination to guide you and always use a systemic approach. That's your A, B, C, D, E's and S's. And lastly, keep practicing. Thank you so much.